Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Brandy Station, also known as the Battle of Fleetwood Hill, located in Culpeper County, Virginia, between Union Major General Alfred Pleasanton and his Cavalry Corps, Army of the Potomac, consisting of 11,000 cavalrymen, and Confederate Major General Jeb Stuart and his Cavalry Division, Army of the Northern Virginia, consisting of 9,500 men. On June 9, 1863, like many battles, the Battle of Brandy Station has multiple names. What is not known by many people is that this is the largest cavalry battle based in the American Civil War or based in American history. Out of the 20,500 men between both sides, more than 17,000 were cavalry. Originally operating off of information about the Confederate cavalry near the town of Culpeper, U.S. Major General Joseph Hooker sent out scouts that confirmed some of this. However, they were at Brandy Station, not Culpeper. I just want to point out as a side note, this is the first battle I've read that specifically mentions the infamous George Armstrong Custer and his presence among the Union troops. General Pleasanton ordered Brigadier General John Buford to take his men, cross what was called Beverly's Ford on the Rappahannock, and investigate. Buford was surprised to find the enemy was there and waiting for them. Fortunately for General Buford, the Confederate forces were also caught off guard. The Confederate cavalry was asleep and the infantry were surprised. General Buford utilized his surprise and pressed his advantage as he slammed into the Confederates. Confederate Brigadier General William E. Grumble Jones was awakened by the sound of fighting. Quickly, Jones's brigade jumped on their horses half-dressed and some men riding bareback to try to help the Confederate infantry who were under attack. Union General Buford noted that Jones was coming and ordered Colonel Benjamin F. Davis to take the lead brigade and ride to intercept the Confederates. Unfortunately for Colonel Davis, he was slain by a bullet to the head by Confederate Lieutenant Robert Allen of the 6th Virginia Cavalry. This counterattack was enough to let the Confederates establish an anchor near Little Brick Church above Beverly's Ford Road. They moved their horse cavalry to St. James Church. Meanwhile, Confederate cavalry troopers were ordered to dismount and take cover behind the low stone walls that littered the area. It is said that both sides exhibited tremendous bravery, especially at Fleetwood Hill, the center of the harshest fighting. Eventually, after a long round of fighting, the Confederates had finally won Fleetwood Hill along with the ground south of the railroad and east of Brandy Station, saving the Confederate headquarters and allowing Confederates to add a W to their scorecard. Union forces suffered to higher casualties, with a total of 1,007 casualties, including 69 killed, 452 wounded, and 486 captured or missing. The Confederates lost around half that number, coming in at 523 casualties, consisting of 51 killed, 250 wounded, and 132 missing or captured. Now, it should be said that while the Confederate forces claimed a well-deserved victory here, this battle had two negative net results. The first is that while Stuart claimed victory, the Confederate press did not believe it was so. The fact that the highly regarded Confederate cavalry had almost lost was a blow to the reputation. Some examples of the local newspapers at the time were the Richmond Inquirer, quote, General Stewart has suffered no little in the estimation by the late enterprises of the enemy. The Richmond Examiner described Stewart's command as a puffed up cavalry that suffered the consequences and negligence and bad management. This would also be the last time that Confederate cavalry had the advantage in skill and morale. Up until now, it was well known that Confederate cavalry troops were better trained, higher morale, and more efficient. However, from this point on, the Confederate cavalry would suffer loss after humiliating loss as the Union cavalry had started hitting their stride and would eventually be the better cavalry. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.